The ancient Romans were indeed master builders. For thousands of years, their incredible constructions have stood the test of time. Yet now, all around us, we see worn out nine-story buildings. So, what was Rome's secret? How did they possess such incredible technology? And why can't we replicate it today? Roads, subways, aqueducts, and heated floors let me tell you about the most insane structures and engineering solutions that remain out of reach even for modern people. Let's start with roads. These were the arteries of ancient Rome. Imagine, millennia ago, Romans built roads that can still function today. It's like if our modern roads lasted until the era of flying cars and space settlers. But what was their technology? First, they dug a trench about a meter deep, then laid wide stone blocks at the bottom. Can you picture how challenging that must have been? Then they filled the remaining space with gravel. But the most interesting part was the top layer, consisting of special plates with convexities allowing water to drain away. It was like an ancient Roman drainage system. Another astonishing fact, the Romans insisted on making their roads perfectly straight. Can you imagine the effort it took to clear the land? But this made the roads shorter and much more durable. But I haven't revealed all the secrets of their technology yet. Let me show you the craziest buildings that are still standing today. The most amazing thing is that these constructions have been perfectly preserved for thousands of years. Take, for example, the Mazenkari, a square house built in the early days of our era. Yes, it's been standing for over 2,000 years, and it only needed a minor cosmetic restoration in the 10th century. After that, it turned into a museum, delighting visitors to this day. And how can we forget the Colosseum, the symbol of Rome? Built in just nine years with the help of 100,000 slaves brought from Judea, its walls, made of tough and marble imported from distant lands, seem indestructible today. Yes, the ancient Romans certainly knew how to build. And what about the Tower of Hercules in La Corua? This lighthouse, built in 117 AD, still guides ships from its majestic cliff. Imagine, it's the only working lighthouse built by ancient masters that's still in operation. But these buildings are just the tip of the iceberg. Far more interesting are the solutions they used inside. Prepare to be amazed. As a vivid example of one of the most incredible innovations of ancient Rome, let me introduce you to the system of heated floors. Yes, you heard that right. The Romans invented heated floors over 2,000 years ago. This technology resembled modern heating systems, except instead of water, hot air was used. The system consisted of two clay hollow columns installed under the floor. This solved two problems at once, the danger of fire and smoke. Back then, fire was the main source of heat, but buildings could easily catch fire, and smoke posed a real threat to life. In the Roman heating system, the floor was raised, allowing hot air to circulate beneath it without coming into contact with the roof. Thus, one furnace could heat several rooms simultaneously, thanks to an intelligent air distribution system. This system was especially popular in Roman baths, where large areas needed to be heated without risking people's lives with smoke. But unfortunately, after the fall of the Roman Empire, this technology disappeared from history for a long time. Imagine how much time passed before humanity rediscovered the benefits of heated floors. But wait, I'm just getting started. Well, more like the Romans now. Imagine ancient Roman mill or sawmill. It was a true marvel of its time. Not just a mechanism, but the embodiment of every builder's dream back then. The mill consisted of a saw driven by a water wheel. It was somewhat like a modern conveyor, but without electricity, relying entirely on water power. With this device, the Romans could cut huge amounts of wood and stone, saving tons of effort and time. Picture a water wheel connected to a shaft, which in turn was linked to saws. It was a real dance of metal and water. The first known sawmill was the Hierapolis Mill, a revolutionary advancement in construction. It was the first known use of a crankshaft mechanism in history. You can witness how it worked firsthand thanks to the relief on the sarcophagus of Marcus Aurelius Ammianus, made possible by this technology. These mills were also used for cutting marble. 
The Roman poet Ausonius described the sound of a water-powered saw cutting marble. Imagine, it was something between a chainsaw and the sound of water. Thus, the Romans created their famous tiles used for building facades. But of course, all this required water. Where did they get it from? Making slaves carry buckets back and forth? No, the Romans came up with a more elegant and advanced solution. Aqueducts. These were grand water bridges of ancient Rome, symbols of engineering mastery and breakthroughs in urban planning. Can you imagine the Romans scratching their heads trying to figure out how to provide their cities with water when rivers were too far away? That's where aqueducts came in, delivering vital water directly into the city. This eliminated the need to build cities along rivers. With a total length of over 400 kilometers, these aqueducts were engineering marvels. They not only provided clean drinking water, but also water for technical needs. This solution allowed cities to expand in any direction, dependent of water bodies. Some aqueducts were built with a steep slope to create pressure, effectively functioning as full-fledged water pipelines. Most of the aqueducts were hidden underground, neatly bypassing natural obstacles, while deep valleys were crossed by bridges where water flowed in lead, ceramic, or even stone pipes called ducks. This is the answer to how the Romans managed to build their magnificent structures so quickly. They didn't burden their workers with useless physical labor. Instead, water was delivered, and the slaves focused on building walls. But wait, there's more to the Romans' cunning craftsmanship. They were not only masters of road construction and aqueducts, but also virtuosos in creating vast interior spaces. You know what their main trick was? They understood that an arch could be rotated in three dimensions, allowing them to create domes of incredible sizes, which we can still see today. And here's where concrete comes into play, a brilliant invention that's still widely used today. However, for the Romans, it was a highly sophisticated material. But I'll tell you about that later. Roman domes were everywhere in baths, villas, palaces, and even tombs. They usually had a hemispherical roof, but suddenly, you'd come across a gigantic dome, leaving you in awe. Isn't it impressive? To support such domes, walls were made wider at the base, and sometimes the dome was covered with a conical or polygonal roof, showcasing a variety of forms, from small saucer domes to segmented and rib domes. The dome structure was built from wooden beams covered with a special brickwork, allowing for even load distribution. So why use concrete? Well, I thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, friends.